Hey, it's Luke with Out of Darts. Worker is at it again. This is the Phoenix 2.0. Let's get going. Worker has been making some decisions in the design world that I really like. The Swift Blaster has been pretty popular, relatively successful, and I really love the design language of it. I think it looks nice. And this feels like it was done by maybe the same designer. Hard to say. Before I go any farther in the video, I do want to mention that obviously I'm a retailer of these blasters, so my opinion is my own, but I want to get that disclaimer out of there. I am selling these on the shop. So keep that in mind. I did a video on the Worker Phoenix 1.0, the original blaster, about a year ago, and we still sell these on the shop. If you're interested in one of these, we are going to heavily discount these because we ultimately ended up with far too many of them due to an ordering mix-up. Hashtag learning. The 2.0, as you can see, is a completely different blaster. They've started from the ground up and redesigned the entire blaster. Gone is the sort of spaceship blocky feel of the original, and now we've got a much more um, sort of ergonomic, stylized, really cool looking blaster. And I think it is very successful in terms of design and aesthetics. I really like the look of the blaster. One thing I, I was surprised is that this blaster is definitely larger than you think. It is not any larger than the 1.0, and it's definitely more rounded off, but the photos definitely lead you to think that it's smaller, but what you forget is that this grip still has to fit a mag in it. At the end of the day, everything is scaled off of this magazine. The blaster was packaged quite well, though unfortunately DHL gave mine a little dent. No problem with the blaster whatsoever. Uh, some interesting things on the box, which is new from Worker. First thing, we've got age 14 plus, and I do think that's appropriate given the type of blaster. A younger kid that was responsible and goes to games could certainly use this blaster, but I think that's a good starting point because eye protection is going to be, in my opinion, mandatory when firing a blaster like this at uh, anybody, pretty much. And then we say, uh, war is coming soon. Mm, could have phrased that a little better, worker. In terms of size, it isn't a whole lot smaller than, say, a Mark III. Uh, here's the Mark III kind of stripped down without the big muzzle. Uh, so the form factor is actually kind of similar, and the weight and handling are somewhat similar as well, other than you're changing the location of your magazine. Other very welcomed upgrades are these brass inserts. Now you'll notice you're going to see there are brass inserts all over this entire blaster. Now I don't know if they have just decided they wanted to up the quality or, or seeing what the hobby is doing with the brass inserts, but I think this is fabulous. As far as I have seen so far, I haven't touched an actual toy screw in here, meaning there's no plastic on metal threading. Everything is, pla is metal into brass insert, which means opening this up and working on it multiple times or over and over or changing it will be very easy. Uh, this comes at quite a bit of an expense as far as the blaster production goes because someone has to gener generally, at the scale worker is doing, is installing these inserts melting them in by hand, just like we do here in the warehouse. So I think that's a really, really nice touch, and it's something I will do going forward on every product and blaster we ever do. I, I'm never gonna make another thing with just screws going directly into plastic because of durability. The Phoenix 2.0 includes an 18 round angled magazine. It is worth noting that only angled magazines will work due to the angle. Uh, magazines like the Tashi or the standard Talon 15s and 18s will not work, so this is very specific to the magazine type. Additionally, like the uh, original Phoenix, you can get a 10 round angled magazine, which kind of has a neat look because it fits right up into the grip. It is also compatible with the Phoenix 2.0 and fits just like the original. This blaster currently only comes in one configuration, a little bit more about the second configuration later, but the initial configuration is six motors, six flywheels, three stages. This blaster works with a 3S LiPo and it can fit up to a 2200 milliamp LiPo 
and it fits all of the 2200 milliamp LiPos that we have on the site. That's very welcome because when you are gonna run six motors, you are definitely going to need a fair amount of current. I've currently got a 1500 milliamp 70C pack in here now, and the LiPo alarm fits very easily. Moving on from the aesthetics, the ergonomics of this blaster are very, very good. This is by far the most comfortable mag through grip blaster I have ever touched. There is not a better one I have felt, and the majority of this is due to this nice TPU mold that goes over the grip itself. Now, this does not glue on here because it does need to be removed if you want to get the blaster open. It's a little bit like the Dart Zone Pro Mark III. But overall, the general feel, the slope, where my fingers rest, and for the size of an adult hand and for my hands, this is fabulous. I do not think anybody can make something more comfortable than this, given you have to fit this fat mag through the grip. Up front, we've got a nice grip. It's got a little button to remove it. I will say that this grip is possible to pull off if you really wrench on it. I don't know if that's intentional. If you did drop your whole blaster, that actually could take some impact off of the blaster and put it into this connection piece. I don't think there's any risk of this breaking permanently, and in real reality, it's not going anywhere when you're actually using it. It's really just a matter of, I was surprised that if I really, I am pulling pretty hard, to be honest. I'm trying, trying to pull it off, but it's something worth noting. If you have really strong, strong hands, you might, might pull that off, but I think, again, in reality, normal use, you're never gonna do that. We've also got an additional rest here, which I think is actually kind of nice. If you want to get kind of nice and tight, you could pull this off completely and you could function like this. That also feels very good as kind of a tiny, tiny mini grip. I um, was a little disappointed to see that this does not rotate. I was kind of expecting this to be a something that you could angle, but again, in its current configuration, it does feel quite good. Moving back to aesthetics for a moment, I think they pulled a Spira. Has anybody caught it before I've mentioned it here? 90% of people are right-handed. Why are all the screw holes on the right side? All of the brass inserts, for whatever reason, are on this side of the shell. And I don't understand why. Because this is the side that looks the nicest. It's got the cleanest look. It's got no screw holes other than these extra ones up here. More on that in a minute. But uh, yeah, I kind of want to pose with this blaster in the... Uh, Left, left-handed configuration, though I will never use it left-handed. And even worse, it is not ambidextrous as far as the mag release goes, so someone just didn't think this through, because there's just no reason to not, these should have been swapped so that the clean side is the side everybody sees and the mag release would be over here. There might be something to that I don't understand, um, you know, as far as assembly or maybe the positioning of the mag release with these other brass inserts and screws. Hard to say, because I didn't design this blaster, but it's something to know. Still think it looks pretty cool and I don't mind uh, the, the brass inserts. I mean, it kind of says quality. This grip, I mean, the more I hold it, it just feels great. It's a really, really nice, easy purchase and just feels really good in my hands. Uh, nice worker emblem here on the grip and I, I think that's just fantastic. I do hope that they will offer replacement grips because I, I noticed um, over, over years of using rubber grips, they do wear out and need replacement, so it'd be nice on a blaster of this caliber if you could replace it. In the back, we've got an adjustable stock, a little bit like their simple extension stock, and it is quite, quite solid. The connection point itself has a thumb screw, and once you get that thumb screw undone, the whole thing pops out. Now, one of the interesting things here is that this is not N-Strike. On the previous Phoenix, we had an N-Strike stock lug, and here we've gone to something a little more proprietary. However, I will say that I think it's an improvement because it has this locking feature where you can make sure that it is not gonna pop off and it's not relying on spring-loaded levers or latches to hold it in place. We've also got a welcomed uh, sling point, which was not existent on the previous version, and I think that's also not only the best place to put the sling point, but they seem very secure and it's well designed. After putting that stock back on here, you have got five different positions that this can sit in. Currently it is all the way back. That feels quite good for my adult arms. I think up to a six foot person could probably use this quite comfortably. And then the more compact you wanna get, the more you can bring that in. One thing I did notice that is you need to be careful not to ram your eye into this site here. If you are gonna put this tight, I tried to 
bring this up to my shoulder too quick and I managed to kind of bonk, bonk. I've got a three-year-old, guys. <laughs> I managed to bonk my, uh, my eye on here, as my daughter would say. But uh, you've got options anyway as far as the storage goes. And then you get down to a nice, really tight form factor if you're gonna do some crazy close quarters stuff. One issue I did notice with the stock is that when in stored position, the stock parts do touch and can touch the side of the body. And I noticed a small amount of rubbing on the left side here. I don't think it's a deal breaker, but it is uh, something to be aware of. I think that depending on the length where you like to play with this, I might put some little, I might create some bumpers or something for the end of this. I almost think like a little TPU bumper on the end of this and that would get you all the way. I think that's doable. I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that. I think a little TPU cover that goes on the end, it could screw in with this screw here and that would stop it from rattling or touching when stored. I can't see using the blaster in this folded form factor quite so much, though it is fun and nice and compact. Additionally, the stock is also technically a battery compartment. There is a screw right here that opens this up and allows you to put a, again, up to 2200 milliamp LiPo inside of here. Now, you can look at that and be like, why would you, how? That, that's my question too. Uh, presumably you would have to put a pass through hole like an XT60 connector or just a hole to run the connector through and then you'd run it back here and maybe drill a hole here or something. To me, it sounds like a little bit more work than it's worth because personally, I think the blaster is actually fabulously balanced right around, it's a little, it's between the back of the grip and the front. So it's really centered right on the uh, actual grip itself, which is, in my opinion, re really what you want for CQB because you are going to be able to, you're gonna be able to whip this. The center of gravity is where your hand is. So I feel like I can really move this blaster. Um, the previous one is also very similar in that as far as the balance, but even with this here, it feels very good. If you put the battery back here, you're moving the center of gravity further back, it's going to be a slower blaster to turn, but it's also going to feel better if you're aiming at longer distances. So I could see maybe wanting that mass further back if you were working at you know, a longer engagement range. On top, we've got a recessed Picatinny rail, which actually looks really, really awesome. There are going to be some accessories that are not going to want to mount to this properly, but I think the look that has is very cool. We have a battery door up top, which has two M2.5 screws to unscrew. One of the first things I'm going to do with my own here is replace this with a battery door thumb screw. It's actually gonna take two. We'll offer those on the site as well. We've already figured out the size um, because you're gonna to wanna to be able to get at that better. You've got some iron sights up top which have uh, sort of some day glow components to them. In reality, I generally can't get my eye down low enough quite where I want to use the rear sights. I, I think I would generally go a little bit above that though. I haven't got to test this in an actual game yet, so we'll see how I feel after using it. Up front, we've got a uh, sort of basic removable muzzle. It's also worth noting that this barrel size here is the same as all of the other worker 19 millimeter plastic barrels, so you can swap this for a variety of muzzles that they already sell. Or, you know, if you've got an all orange blaster and you want it to look like that, you could remove it completely. It doesn't do anything. I frequently had people ask me, can I put a scar on my flywheeler? And the answer is yes, you probably could, but it's probably not gonna help anything and it's going to kill your performance. Uh, and this is because you don't have airflow to power through those scar uh, interference, the, the friction that creates that rotation. And without that rotation, you just plop darts on the ground. Up front, you'll also notice we kind of have a neat recessed area. I really like the look of that. I think it it's, looks very cool. And we've also got a rate of, a fire, rate of fire adjustment. So this has a PWM built in. But without going to any more, much longer here, let's actually toss some darts through it. So, very easy to get single shots off. Let's do some in full auto. To my ears, that's sounding like about five rounds a second. I can't confirm that exactly, but we'll put the rate of fire up on the screen. Here, I'm actually gonna adjust this, so I'll do some at full again. So this is the maximum rate of fire. We'll go down a little bit.
Now, as you can hear, this thing is loud. It's definitely not one of the quietest blasters out there. It's, it seems like it might be a little quieter than the 1.0, but that's a little bit hard to, to, to compare directly, at least by memory. In terms of performance, the Phoenix 2.0 is also delivering the hits. On my brief test here, I'm seeing close to 160 average. We'll put the actual numbers up on the screen. The previous blaster got about 151 average, so it's definitely a noticeable improvement. And it does seem just in general to spin up a little bit faster, maybe be a little bit more responsive. I suspect they've upgraded both the wheels and the motors to some extent. It's kind of hard to tell. I don't think three stages is optima optimal. I think we in the community have done better with a single stage or, or two stage, but this is what we have. <laughs> I alluded earlier in the video about other features coming to the blaster, and what Worker is doing is they've got a PCB and a controller that will, in theory, give you select fire, burst, all of that, and rate of fire control all on a nice little display up top. I expect they are having supply chain shortages with the chip shortages that are going on, we are currently out of stock on multiple MOSFET products because the controllers and the MOSFETs and even some of the diodes and little things are not available. Uh, so I expect we'll see that later in the year. We're unsure whether that's going to be compatible with the existing one, so keep that in mind, of course. I don't know anything more at the moment. I see there are some empty screw holes up here, so I'm guessing that that might be utilized in holding the components that actually sense the firing rate, whether it, they do that optically or mechanically. I'm not entirely sure what they're going to do, but I imagine that's what those are for. Only time will tell. Supposedly, we're gonna see that uh, kit from Worker with the display later in 2022. At the end of the day, this is a really solid blaster. I'm gonna give it four out of five stars because I think the triple flywheel system three-stage setup is really not optimal. I can guarantee you I could design a cage with two of the same stages and get just as high performance and then reduce the cost to manufacture. It just doesn't seem very well thought out in that terms. However, it does perform fairly well at a, almost 160 FPS or around 160 FPS. And I think it's going to be a very good CQB blaster. The rate of fire, could be a little faster, but at around five rounds a second, it seems pretty decent. It's usable. I'd love to see that bumped up, and I'm going to see if that can't be improved through modding and replacing the pusher motor, but we'll find out more on that later. I think ultimately this blaster will shine at CQB, given that the triple flywheel stage is not ideal for accuracy. A standard daybreak flywheel cage and with short darts makes more contact with the dart and, and causes less wobble overall. And something with going through three sets of flywheels, it's not as accurate as say uh, the Mark III with a daybreak cage or a Strife with a daybreak cage. But if this form factor is something you like and you like the look and style of the blaster, I could see this being tremendously popular. As I mentioned before, we do sell these on the shop and you'll, we'll have more on that later. We also still have the 1.0 at a heavy, heavy discount. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to getting this in the field and playing with it at an actual game. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this first review of the Worker Phoenix 2.0. Until next time, I'm out of darts. <laughs>